Chairman of Yesh Atid, and now I'm honored to call upon Professor uh, Uzi Arad, uh, previously the head of the National Security Council and National Security Advisor to the Prime Minister and the founder of the Herzliya Conference. Professor Arad will talk about the strategic challenges to Israel. Please, Professor Arad. Good morning. It's good to be back here again. It was very important again to listen to the various calls and directions uh, posed by member of Knesset Lapid. Again, to a great extent, this is a way of defining the strategic challenges of Israel, and indeed, it really is an operative and orderly doctrine that does point to the various directions. And alongside this, I would propose as well to, to present background information in light of which we can outline the strategic challenges. It is almost a work of intelligence, again, to present this evaluation. Where Israel is at at the moment in terms of the various resources that it has, um, which it has to recruit in order to achieve its objectives. And it could be the objectives proposed by member of Knesset Lapid or some other objectives and goals that or, um, were uh, presented yesterday in Jerusalem in terms of the new agenda, or any other objective, because strategic objectives can be achieved only if there are resources, and resources are power. Resources are strength in order to execute and in order to overcome any resistance or to overcome problems. So. Let's be methodical and let's examine and see where Israel is at right now in terms of its resources, the changing resources, and its ability to be able to conduct change and achieve its objectives. We can do this clinically. We can use uh, neutral terms, what are our military um, resources of power, that can be utilized, and again, this is related to military problems, what are the political resources at our disposals, disposal, what are our technological, scientific resources, what are our economic resources, our social resources, and what our are our government, governance resources. Sometimes, again, we can, is, we can call this capital, what kind of social capital we have, what kind of governance capital, what kind of financial capital we have. This is a synonym of sorts. But in order to evaluate Israel's situation, we need some sort of a benchmark. Um, in terms of what we wish to achieve, that is a way. But another way of doing this, and it does have logic, is using the comparative method. But comparing ourselves to whom? Well, comparing ourselves to other countries, that's very prevalent. Also comparing oneself to oneself in the past. So we have some sort of an index um, against which we measure and evaluate, but we have to understand that in this international interaction, whether it is a political one, whether it is an economical or military one, it is usually a competitive interaction, and that is why the the forces at play determine whether we are less strong or less strong, but in a competitive interaction, in every sense, that is what determines. And it is not something absolute. If you have grown and your enemy has grown twofold, then you have actually taken steps back. That is the truth that every person from the intelligence knows. Also, every businessman knows this. That is why we have to place Israel in the comparative arena or index. And I'm just going to um, refer to a different uh, area now. I'll give you an overview of where we're at now. There's only one area in which Israel, according to various indices and various rankings, is in the top ten in the world. Only one and that is the military area. It is very difficult to evaluate military power. It's complex, it's difficult, but wherever you go, you always find Israel in terms of its military force and strong points in the leading in the top 10 or in the top 12 among the world.
And uh, nobody questioned this. This is not surprising because from the beginning of Ben Gurion's strategy, he knew that in order to be on par with the military challenges posed by the Arab states, it needs a strong army, a very strong army, even stronger than its relative scale. And you have to understand that this high quality military that we have costs a lot because, again, ranking again um, security expenses per capita, we are maybe third or fourth place in the world. That means that the citizen, that member of Knesset Lapid um, praise is something else, actually bears that defense system on his or her shoulders when he goes out, when he fights, when he falls, when he gets injured, and also through his pocket. And that is why this, uh, what hopefully we can acknowledge this and we can realize this to its full potential. This again, I think, concludes um, the, our scale of excellence. I think there's almost no area in the world that we are even part of the, the second, uh, uh, part of the first 20 in the world. Sometimes technological innovations in specific sectors, um, sometimes Israel paves its way forward. But uh, not on the broader front, not on, on the broader economic front, but we have certain points of excellence. And if we look forward, we actually discover, according to the UN indices, the World Bank, and other authorized bodies around the world, and I'm actually talking about the entire series, that in contrast to various visions and Israeli dreams, that in the past talked about the top 15 for Israel, Israel's objective for 2028 is that Israel would be in uh, 15th in um, uh, GDP, again, till uh, 2028, number 15. We, are, we hold the 35th place. And in all the other indices, whether they are social, whether they are economic, we find ourselves, again, the, the, for the part of the first 40, again, if we um, compare ourselves to the OECD, if that's our index, we are really at the bottom. By the way, in another room at this moment, Professor Melnick is presenting the Celia indices, and I will see this uh, soon, but I imagine those, those statistics uh, are focusing um, on what I'm speaking now on those economic and social um, areas. It's not our strong points. I would even say these are our weak points. However, this is not the end of the, the issue because there are a few areas that in comparison to the rest of the world, we actually are in a terrible state. In education, this was said already, despite our efforts, we have been able to stabilize ourselves. We found a place in place 35, according to some sort of index, but in, a, again, a very important conference, almost like the Otelier conference, in the previous Davos conference, when there was an index uh, that showed to what extent they are, again, prepared for the challenges of the 21st with their young generation. We are lagging behind quite significantly. We found ourselves uh, in uh, around the place 50. Again, that criterion of uh, being ready, preparedness for the future among the younger generation, that's a weak point. But there are certain areas that are even more difficult in terms of image, political image, in contrast to very various allies that we have and uh, covenants that we have in terms of image, Israel, how it is perceived in public opinion, very low place. It is, um, it's difficult. It is a result uh, of many efforts that were made to create such a negative image. And now I'm going to pinpoint perhaps the most strategic challenges in which, in comparison to other countries, uh, we are really not doing well at all in terms of governance. You can call it governance, uh, regime, um, rule, and I'm not talking about what member of Nestle Lepi talked about politicians. That is just the, the, the cream of the crop. That is the top echelon. I am talking um, about the executive branch of the state. That executive branch that has to execute things, that has to implement things. Education, health, law and order, 
things like that. Notice the World Bank ranks Israel in effectiveness of governance in the sixth so again, when we also rank Israel in terms of its friendliness to the commercial sector, again, we sort of characterize that governance framework as, some, as a framework that represses, that shows place 70, 80, whether we're talking about for Israeli businessmen or investors from abroad. That is a very heavy weight something that greatly represses our ability to execute. As to education, there we identify not only the fact that we are ranked very low, but again, the critical systems like the higher education is wearing and tearing, is being eroded. Look, um, again, in England about a year ago, uh, an average uh, Brit uh, complained about the situation. Uh, people said, we don't have strategy, we don't have leadership, the situation is, is bad, we again on the verge of some sort of chasm between Scotland and ourselves, um, again, even being isolated from Europe, okay, that's what was said. People, the Brits said the situation is dire, there's a lot of uh, security issues. That is how the average Brit complained. If that is what concerns the Brits, we have all of these things as problems as well, including the identity crisis. This was called, talked of yesterday, call it uh, tribehood. Or, uh, this is what member of Knesset Lapid talked of regarding, the, uh, regarding politics. But we have added difficulties that Britain is not exposed to. And yet, the Brit consoled himself by saying, at least we have a number of systems that are world class. For example, the higher education system is very high on the index. And that is why we say, yes, Oxford, Cambridge, London School of Economics and so forth, yes, that is definitely something that a Brit can take pride in. What about our universities? How are they ranked? We are the people of the book. And that is the engine that is supposed to drive our technological progress and advance. There are so many countries around the world that have more than one university that are of the top 50 in the world. We don't even have one. And that is why the situation of the state of Israel in terms of its resources is very asymmetrical because alongside certain areas where we excel, in which we are strong, we have certain areas where we are very mediocre in terms, of, again, of resources in comparison to others, and we have certain areas where we are failing. Now, somebody may come and say, let us look at the, you know, the full half of the, um, of the cup. We are a startup nation, and yet I would like to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, there is something reciprocal between all these areas, that means that if you have an army which is of high quality, top league, and yet the political echelon and the governance echelon is so very low, that actually brings down the army, same goes for other areas of excellence. Yesterday, in Jerusalem, the president talked about engines. He talked about what were those engines that created unity and that could really create bridges between the tribes. And he mentioned, again, systems of the, of the executive branch, the higher education, uh, the, the, the labor market, and education. But I would like to say to the president, maybe something that only people of my generation can say, you want engines? There is no engine. Was there an engine? There is no engine. Because, you know, the keys are there in the car, but there is no engine. Let's say it better. The engine is broken. Okay, or such a, a car that can't go uphill. Have you ever driven such a car that can't go uphill? That is what we are doing to our executive branch. And without strengthening the executive branch and without some sort of revolutionary change, you will not be able to uplift everything else. You can place visions for yourself. Who will execute the visions? Okay, they will be engraved on some sort of wall, but who will go about executing them? You know, in the past, we had this ethos. This state had an ethos of being people who execute, who are practical. Today, there is no execution. It is so blurred. 
It is so insignificant, and without this, nothing will happen. And that is why our strategic challenge, or the strategic um, challenge per excellence, is the ability to identify what the strategic challenge is, to identify what is most crucial in order to exercise things and then to create a change. And now, just in conclusion, I would like to say that as far as a number of things goes, Israeli, the Israeli public or society it does many good things. We have so many visions. We have a myriad of flourishing visions in Israel. That's the easy part. It is executing these visions that is the difficult part. In a number of places, Often times, we ourselves are the enemies of ourselves. We place that spoke in the wheel of our own wheels. I mentioned conferences before, and now I'd just like um, to give a, a bit of respect to the Caesarea Conference, in which they talked about strengthening the executive branch. And what did they say there at the conference? Um, and they prepared a very important paper about this topic. They talked about the fact that all the reforms that today um, are on the table of Prime Minister and take the title of improving governance, for example, appointing more deputy ministers, for example, the ability to place more trustees in different areas, all these things will actually bring about the opposite phenomenon. Politicization actually undermines social services. It brings about appointments of people that have no capabilities um, and professionalism. When actually, when statehood has to take charge, actually part of these reforms are counterproductive. Also in other dimensions as well, some of the things that we do actually cut the branch upon which we are sitting. Because if we would like to strengthen various alliances and, and, and covenants, especially strategic ones, with the Western world, with the United States, for example, you cannot have this confronting or sort of um, um, a policy of locking horns with the other. And one needs to, to know how to be flexible and improvise, to have that wisdom. If one wants to strengthen education, which is the main resource where we can compromise for our other weak points and have some advantage, you must not respect tribehood, but take an approach of statelyhood. You have to go to and back to the, that core curriculum, and this is something, again, that we have forgotten. And, and you can ask President Perez why he was elected when he was elected. I'll give you a little hint. It was because of, again, annulling the core curriculum among the ultra-Orthodox sector. And that is why not only do we have to see in the strengthening of the state of Israel and, it, um, and improving its political state, again, Member of Knesset Lapid talked about in the various dimensions where we have to strengthen ourselves, fortify ourselves in order to maneuver in the 21st century in the current circumstances. But you have to do it in such a way that it is powerful, in a way that's profitable, in a coherent method so that what you do in one area does not come at the expense of another field or a different dimension, but there will be positive reciprocal relations. For example, advancing education, advancing technology will have a positive byproduct and impact inequality, assimilating and integrating various sectors that are not integrated at the moment, the Arab sector, the ultra-Orthodox sector. And if I may, let me talk about minority, and I use this word intentionally as it is used in the USA. My Minority that is not really a minority, but even gender, women, which is a huge human resource, is integrated in everything, and what about resources to leverage the sector? In order to do so, you have to do it professionally. The resources are not enough. You have to do it again in, a, in this um, principle of being stately above any tribe and not sanctifying this tribism or tribehood, which is often empowered under all what I mentioned. These are the true challenges of the state of Israel, oftentimes I'm asked whether I'm optimistic, because I always look for the problems and I find them. I say it is very simple. What we have to do 
is quite clear. There are certain ailments that we have to contend with. This is also very clear after this analysis. But if we do so, and again, these are things that we have done in the past. These are enterprises, these are efforts that we have invested in in the past and successfully. So if we function as we did when we were at our peak, at our very best, we can overcome everything because there is no threat that is terminal in itself. However, if we do not do this, and if we turn into our own worst enemy, then this, the cumulative effect of all these problems and the severity of all the problems, including what the governor of the, of the, of the Bank of Israel said two days ago about the problems, demographic problems, and she said if these are not dealt with, we will become insolvent in no time. This is what she said, that's something terminal. We need to change the trends completely. You need a complete change, an overall change. This is a strate strategic challenge. And all the rest, that's just the tiny details. Thank you so much.